the age of bloody civil war, 2,500 years ago, a Chinese military commander, strategist and philosopher emerged. His name? Sun Tzu. After successfully defending the state of Wu against its neighbor Chu to the west, a book formerly known as Master Sun's Military Methods was born, which has later become known as The Art of War. The Art of War is the most influential treatise on war ever written, consisting of 13 chapters, each of which is devoted to one aspect of warfare. It has shaped the way in which conflicts have been fought thousands of years, from the Japanese samurai to the Napoleonic War. Not only has the book influenced military commanders and generals all over the world, it has had resounding effects on politics, sports and business to this day. The Art of War is of vital importance to the state. It's a matter of life and death a road either to safety or to ruin. Hence, it's a subject of inquiry, which can on no account be neglected. Sun Tzu has a holistic philosophy that if you follow correctly and study thoroughly, you will be victorious. Sun Tzu says, avoid what is strong and strike at what is weak. Sun Tzu is a strong believer that winning the war with as little unnecessary combat as possible is the key to true victory. Supreme excellence consists in breaking the enemy's resistance without fighting, and the key to doing so is to know your enemy well. If your opponent is arrogant, pretend to be weak, so he will underestimate you. If he was relaxing, attack and give him no rest. If his forces are united, separate them. Sun Tzu is essentially saying that if you know your opponent's weaknesses and how to exploit them, you will never lose. And so it dawned the hopeless Athenians do the unthinkable. They attacked. They attacked the weary Persians as they disembarked their ships on shaky legs after a month at sea. They attacked before they could establish their war camp and supply their soldiers. Sun Tzu says, if you know the enemy and know yourself, you need not fear the result of a hundred battles. During the mid-1960s, a war took place between the North Vietnamese Communists and the United States of America. Instead of confronting the Americans head-on, the Viet Cong had a different idea in mind. They used unconventional guerrilla warfare tactics, which included hit-and-run strategies. This proved very effective against the much larger military of the Americans. It's more important to outthink your enemy than to outfight him. The Viet Cong forces were inferior to the Americans in both man and firepower, so guerrilla warfare tactics allowed them to inflict significant damage while keeping their casualties to a minimum. They also had unparalleled knowledge of the terrain. This included a vast network of underground tunnels, allowing them to evade carpet bombing and escape the enemy. The terrain was also laced with various booby traps and gun mines. Even though the Viet Cong and North Vietnamese were heavily outarmed by the American superpower, they were still able to defeat them as they truly understood Sun Tzu's philosophy. All warfare is based on deception. Hence, when we are able to attack, we must seem unable. When using our forces, we must appear inactive. When we are near, we must make the enemy believe we are far away. When far away, we must make him believe we are near. This philosophy can be seen in the World War II invasion of Normandy, known as D-Day. The British created several fictional units of troops stationed in Scotland who were ready to invade Europe through its northern regions, in particular Scandinavia. They then used several misinformation techniques to persuade Hitler that 350,000 of these troops were primed to attack. Radio chatter in Scotland lit up with the talks of these troops preparing for an overseas assault, and many of these transmissions were made easily interceptable. Allied spies who had been able to infiltrate the Germans reported these developments as well, reinforcing their legitimacy. These spies also took photographs of planes and tanks posed for invasion, but these were actually blow-up models in most cases. All this caused dozens of German divisions to go up to bogus locations and wait for an imaginary army to show up, whilst important battles were fought elsewhere. This method of dividing enemy forces was also employed to a greater extent on D-Day itself. Soviet forces kept around a million of the German forces busy on the Eastern Front, whilst the Allied invasion occurred on the Western Front. This tactic of dividing the enemy is one of Sun Tzu's key philosophies and allowed the Allies to achieve victory and eventually win the war. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, make sure to like and subscribe and comment down below what video you would like us to do next.